I got one. It's got something really, really big on there. <laughs> this week on Kentucky Afield. Here we go. We're headed to the Ohio River, just outside of the city of Louisville. And we're just gonna see what we can catch. Look at that. Then, we're headed to Kentucky Lake, and we've got big fish on our mind. But we aren't using a rod and reel. We put stick around in there. It's all next on Kentucky Afield. Such a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. Here in Kentucky, we are very lucky that we have so many different rivers that we can fish. And there's one thing that's always true about fishing a river, you never know what you're gonna catch. Well, it's Derby week, so of course we're headed to Louisville. But we're not here to watch the horses. We're coming to the Falls of Ohio and we're gonna walk in and see what we can catch. That's the beautiful thing about fishing here in the Ohio River. This is a great time of year. A lot of fish are migrating upstream and they get to this lock and dam and throwing any type of imitator of a small bait fish can produce good numbers of fish and you never know what you're gonna catch. When I come here, I like to bring a lot of tackle because getting hung up in snags is part of the deal. And I'm gonna throw predominantly small swim bait, soft plastics, and vary the weight of the jig head to keep myself right off the bottom and see what we can't catch today. We're right here at the upper McAlpin Dam. And I usually like to try to start pretty close to the dam and just look for the right amount of flow and the right depth of water. So we'll start here, and if we have to move and find some fish, then that's what we'll do. Well, the deep water is way out there, further than I can cast, and up here close to the bank. The plan is to see how close I can get a cast to right on the edge of that rip. So that bait comes through there, it's all disoriented. Of course, there's a bunch of oxygen in the water, and the predator fish are gonna sit right on the edge of that and they're gonna catch everything coming out that's easy prey. So I gotta to try to find a location where I can safely get out there, cast that on that edge, and make my lure look like that distressed prey coming through there. Let's head down and try to find us a deep pocket of water. You know, this river obviously flows from Ohio, Pittsburgh area, and then goes south all the way to Mississippi. So the river's flowing really hard this way. But it's coming through these fossil beds, through that channel, so fast right now that it's creating a backwash that's coming back around this way. When I make a cast, my lure is very quickly going upstream, not downstream. That tells you how much current is in here right now. I mean, I'll tell you what, at any point in time, you end up in this water, it could be very dangerous. Well, you see, I definitely have my life jacket on. We're probably about a quarter of a mile away from where we started, and here we have finally found a bend where it looks like we got a decent amount of water. Here we go. The mystery of the Ohio River, what is it? Well, look at that. Never would have thought in a million years come down here and the first fish on the catch is a smallmouth bass. Ha! That's a beautiful thing. I'm here in the Ohio River. Everybody talks about how the bass population is really bad. But in these rock beds where you got really good water quality, you never know. Look at there, smallmouth bass. Beautiful. 
All right. Thank you, buddy. Little 15 inch smallie. Not what I expected my first fish of the day to be, I will tell you that. I was thinking maybe white bass, maybe hybrid, potentially a catfish, could be a drum. Small mouth. <laughs> Look, we're not alone. We got another gentleman here that just joined us. You've been fishing down here for quite a while, right? Yeah, several years. Yeah. yeah. You're from Bullitt County, not that far away. Right. You said your son's down here with you somewhere? He fishing? is. He's down at lower end. What do you love about fishing the Ohio River? I just love fishing all together. Yeah. But Ohio River, it's cool. You know, it's, you come over here and you can see different things in the rocks and this and that and the old cotton woods. And you said you were here yesterday. Yeah. And you were catching what? We was catching white bass, stripes, what I call stripers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one guy did catch a big hybrid. It's amazing to me what type of fishery this is. And you look right there in the county to the south of us, right here in Louisville, has got a million people. But there's always a spot on the bank that you can come there in is. here and try to catch a fish. There is. Well, I was sitting here on this point kind of casting out, and I just had caught a, you know, a little 15, 16 inch smallmouth. And I saw that you had something that I thought, man, I hope we get to see this fish. It's got something really, really big on there. <laughs> Stripping line. I'd like to see him come up so we know what you're dealing with. With 10 pound tests on a light wire hook like that, you can't bear down and just no, drag them in. You no. gotta just let them, you, you gotta, gotta let, let them decide. You gotta let him be the boss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think I just saw it. It's a shark. Yeah, spoonbill. Had you caught a spoonbill before? I have. Okay. I have. Oh, he's hooked right there on the side. You see that? I caught some up at Taylorsville, there at the spillway. Okay. And I actually caught, because I was fishing in the trough. Yeah. And uh, it actually bit. Yeah. And yeah. So that was pretty cool. Oh! He didn't like that pinch on the tail. I couldn't get my hand around the bend of it. The tail, I don't think, flexes. You yeah. know, it stays. Yeah. So that's that's why I said, you know, if we get him by the tail, you pretty much got we him. We got him. If I can grab that rostrum, we're good shit. Look at that. Look yeah, what you you too slick. Look what you've got there. Isn't that pretty amazing that that lives right here in the river? It's amazing. Yeah. That's like stepping back in time. You know, that's a dinosaur fish, so I say, you know. And when you first see them, really the slick skin and the way the tail is forked, they do kind of look like a shark until you see yeah. the rostrum. Yeah. Well, let's yeah. go catch another fish. Let's do it. I got one. Ain't much, whatever it is. <laughs> oh, Sauger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you go from that to this. <laughs> well, I tell you what, these Sauger are really good table fare. I ain't kidding you, I love them. But he needs to grow up about two years. <laughs> but that's good though. I like to see a lot of small fish as well because that makes your fishery as good, you know? That's what keeps us coming back. Here we go. There we go. What have we got here? You never know. That's what you have Can fish. you believe that? Now that is a catfish <laughs> on a cool. swim bait. Now that is, we have sat here in a few minutes and caught four different species of fish. That is awesome. That's what I like about the river. You just never know. Arm still aching. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe bigger. You may catch it again one of these days. I might days. do it. Lieutenant McQuarrie, how you doing? Good, sir. Good to see you again. Today we're going to talk about something a little different. Hunting from a boat. This can be a lot of fun, especially for small game hunting. In counties that have a big river system, we see that a lot. Mm -hmm. People tend to love to hunt from a boat after small game, mm -hmm. squirrels in particular. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, when I was a kid, my dad would take me out fishing and it, when squirrel season was in, we would be fishing down a waterway and hunting at the same time and it just, it doubled your chances. It really is a good way to keep a kid active. It sure is, you can stay active all day long. The things we have to avoid is, and you need to know, is you can not hunt big game from a boat. So your deer, elk, turkey, and bear can't be hunted from a boat. But again, it's the perfect opportunity to fish and hunt squirrels. What species can be hunted from a boat? It's your small game species and your fur bears. So uh, hunting squirrels from a boat, what else do you need to know? I mean, even if you're hunting, you have to, your boat has to be legal 
you have to make sure you've got the throwable device, uh, um, your fire extinguisher, everything. You got to make sure your boat is legal, right? Sure, all your proper safety equipment. And the next thing is you have to make sure that they have permission to hunt on that property and retrieve that animal. Okay, that's something that you really need to remember. So Army Corps of Engineer properties in and around lakes and rivers and streams where there's no houses behind you, perfect opportunities for this, right? It is the perfect opportunity if it's open to hunting. Mm -hmm. And wildlife management areas as well. You're exactly right, Chad. For example, Green River WMA is a perfect opportunity. So you can come out here, do a little fishing, keep a kid active, and it's a really fun, safe way. But you gotta make sure we're only talking about small game and fur bears. No hunting of any type of big game, turkeys, deer, elk, none of that can be done from a boat. You're exactly right, and we have to make sure when we talk about fur bears that you are not allowed to harvest raccoons or possums from a boat mm -hmm. casting the rays of a light. The other thing is some people do use boats for waterfowl hunting. Now that is that gets a little bit a little bit more dicey because that boat cannot be under power. What we're trying to avoid are people using a boat to motor ducks up and shoot them while they're on the move. Okay. So they're allowed to use a boat to get to their spot and hunt from the boat, but they can't be under power while shooting. That's ducks. exactly right, Chad. If you've never tried hunting from a boat, it's a lot of fun and it can be done very safe. You just gotta make sure that you prepare, have your permission lined out, and make sure your boat is safe. Here in Kentucky, we have catfish in about every body of water across the state, and there are many different ways to try to catch them. Here's a way you may or may not consider trying. All right, for me, uh, I don't like I don't like the water. You don't see me in too often, so uh, <laughs> not that I'm afraid of it. I just think it's cold. <laughs> All right, you so can swim, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We're down here on the banks of Kentucky Lake. This is the place that I've done a lot of fishing, but. The type of fishing we're doing today is brand new to me. We're going to be jumping in the water and, and hopefully grabbing some big flathead catfish by hand. Some people call it hogging and some <laughs> people call it tickling and some call it hand fishing, but it, it's all the same thing. So I believe I believe he's sticking his foot in there and he's locating that hole and he's kind of positioning himself and getting ready, getting a good, good lung full of air and diving down and literally going all the way to his feet and then running his hand up in that hole. I'm sure that people that you've told you you'd like to go out and noodle or, or hand grab catfish, they're probably like, oh my God, aren't you scared? Oh, it's a, it's a defining <laughs> characteristic. I mean, you tell people you catfish noodle and, and it's one of the things they always remember about you and they always ask. And yeah, I mean, that's that's one of the appeals of it. She's been down there a while. Oh, yeah. oh there he is, there, there he is. <laughs> He's got it. What little you, guy. What do you got there? Just a little channel cat. You can see where they get skinned up under those rocks and things. Oh yeah, that's the way to get started. You're just gonna turn him loose? And yeah, just turn him loose. And find his way right on back down. Yeah, we can go find something bigger. I've been noodling catfish, I guess 16 years. Um, as a matter of fact, my very first assignment as an outdoor rider was to go down to Mississippi and uh, and try to noodle a catfish and write a story <laughs> about it. Those guys, they were pretty intense, pretty serious about it, but I learned how to do it. I caught a nice flathead and I was like, man, this is cool. I like big catfish, I always have. I've always been intrigued by them. And I, you know, I grew up, catching snakes and frogs and lizards and like a lot of country kids do. And I just like being outside doing that sort of thing. So we've been doing it about 15 years now and kind of a crew of family and, and buddies. And we, we just, we have a great time. We go every summer. Uh, oh, yeah, I feel him. I, I feel the pad. Get ready. There you go. <laughs> there he is. Kentucky actually has a season. It opens June 1st. It really gets going when the water temperature hits about 80 degrees. It's when the flatheads kind of start moving up into the holes and, uh, and stays good for a few weeks there. And honestly, by about the middle of July, we're, we're skinned up and worn out and ready to hang it up for the year anyway. <laughs> Check his gills and be sure nothing's bleeding and it's not. So fish is in good shape. He's in good shape. He got a little skinned up there on the on the rock. But That's kind of part of it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can see on their back a lot of healed stuff. Yeah. yeah. And even his dorsal fin, he's he's wallowed that down. You know where he's gotten up under there and, and dug. You know. So I tell you what, flathead catfish though are such... oh they're they're cool, aren't they? Look at that mouth. Look at that big old mouth and these little bitty eyes. They are a prehistoric looking fish. He'll yeah, find his way right back in. He'll find his way right back in. I about guarantee you catch him in there tomorrow. So. <laughs> Well, we need to catch one about three times that size. So. Your wife actually enjoys doing this. She does, my wife and my son, Ants. We're an outdoors family. We hunt and fish for anything that's in season, year round. So we, we've been going out and doing this for a long time. Wouldn't, wouldn't have it any other way. So Ants is getting up here. This is a really shallow spot, which is absolutely perfect for a first timer or a young fellow like this. Uh oh, <laughs> he's in there, yep. He's in there. All right, you gotta get down in the water, belly down. There you go. 
go. Remember, get your, get your face in the water. See my arms down in the hole? He's been going out here with us since two years old. You know, we've been putting him in the boat and, and yeah. taking him along. And it's a catfish. It might bite his hand, but it's not gonna. It's not gonna hurt him. He'll be okay. <laughs> he just came up and bit at his hand. <laughs> he bite your hand. Uh -huh. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> Michelle and I have always hunted and fished together and we just decided when he was born we're just going to take him with us. Yeah. And uh, you know when he gets big enough to decide he doesn't want to go, that's fine. But he sure likes it. He, he loves it. Good job. So what would that feel like buddy? What would that feel like doing that? That was pretty fun. Pretty fun? Did you feel the fish bite your hand? Yeah. He bit you one time, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Did it scare you a little bit? No? You're not scared of anything, are you? <laughs> we release 99% of the catfish we catch doing this, and we almost always have. To. And hey, we, we like to catch big catfish too, so yeah. we have an interest in not killing them. You know, it's a misconception that noodlers are going out there and cleaning everything they catch. They're sport fishermen just like everybody else. A lot of people sink boxes for, for catfish noodling or drums, just like sinking structure for crappie, but it's, you know, it's for a single catfish. First time I've ever tried this, so uh, <laughs> we're here at this box and I got my feet right in the opening where I'm gonna go down and stick my arm in there and try to feel around and see if there's anything in there. What's the biggest thing you have to really be, watch out for? Everybody asks about the beaver, snakes, and turtles. <laughs> Every time. If I take somebody new, that's the first thing they ask. When you see turtles everywhere, you see some snakes on the bank and stuff, but so far as a turtle backing up in the holes, I mean, they, these holes that we're checking, they're, they're well underwater, they're under rocks and things. Didn't feel anything? No, didn't feel anything. Sweep that stick around in there. A turtle has to breathe, and it's not a place that a turtle is going to back up into. Do you use the hook in or the other Yeah, end? the hook in. The thing that we stress, like we always go in groups, we never have somebody dive alone. I mean, the, the biggest real danger is obviously drowning. There's always the chance that you're going to get stuck underwater. I don't feel anything. Nobody home. So we always have somebody right there next to us when we dive. And most of the holes that we check, you can you can stand up. But there are a few that are over your head, and those you need to, you need to be particularly careful. A lot of what we check, honestly, are holes that we found in the banks, under rocks. It's taken us 15 years of looking, and we look continuously every summer. We've kind of built a circuit of areas that we check. Some days, this one will have a fish in it, and that one won't, and vice versa, but it's it's uh, it's still fishing. Getting ready to check another hole. This is completely different than the last one. It's not actually a man-made box. It's up under the bank, and it's got some concrete in around it. So we're gonna go see what they've got. They said this hole has been known to hold some pretty good sized fish. She, she, she already got one. Yeah, she gets real quiet. <laughs> I tell you what, this is this is something that you probably wouldn't want to do by yourself for safety concerns, but it also takes some teamwork sometimes to manipulate these fish in the best way to get them out. That's what we're seeing right here. But if you come to the left, I gotta push hand. him back in. Yeah. Is he a mean little sucker, Mama? <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is, baby. He's biting the fur out of my. Oh! Woo! Oh! 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 I heard something. Did one of you guys? I had a stick under here. Oh, it might have been raking or something. You want to try this one or? Yeah, I'll, I'll double check it. The other day there was a fish that kind of laid over to the right, and he was kind of hard to, kind of hard to find. Be sure. It's just hard to get a feel for what you're feeling for. Uh, with oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> fish. When you go in, take that stick and turn it to the right. Okay. You hit a, the stick. It's a flathead. So. Once I locate where he's at with the stick, then I got to manipulate him. Yeah, yeah, you kind of have to manipulate him a little bit, and you might, he'll, he'll probably bite that stick, and you might be able to just kind of pull him, and as you do, swing him out, and I would have your left hand in there ready to get him. All right. But you'll you'll know it if he gets on that stick. But yeah, go in there and go straight right. Straight right. Yep. All right. Oh, I heard it, I heard him thump. Yeah. <laughs> We heard all that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
He's got the stick. <laughs> oh, did he take it away from you? No, I'll get it right there at the bow. I mean, we didn't even have a patent on that stick. <laughs> <laughs> He's on that stick. He should have him. Uh -oh. What do we got? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had him there for a few minutes. I had him got him in and got my hand under there. <laughs> oh man. Well I turned him loose, obviously. Yeah, we I got, got to see him. So. <laughs> nice got work. him up out of there. <laughs> so wait a minute, what have we got here? <laughs> if we slow that video down, you'll be able to tell that I actually did have a catfish in my hand for a second. I got it out and, and uh you, you guys were told me to keep it close to my body. Well, when I went to stand up, I was trying to show it to the camera. Yeah. And I had it out about this far away and it just got loose. Oh yeah, we all saw it and it's on tape. So. We were gonna turn it, <laughs> we were gonna turn it loose anyway. <laughs> but that was pretty awesome. Yeah, that's pretty that cool. was pretty that awesome. Was pretty cool. <laughs> You know, a 50 pound flathead is a handful. They can torque fingers and twist wrists. You can't just grab them by the jaw and let their tail go in open water because they're gonna beat you up pretty quick. It's so far down that the pressure builds. Try and hold your breath when you get down there. Mm. Like it takes me a little while to, I just can't stay down there long on this hole. You've got to respect the fish like oh, that, yeah. but if you hold them the right way, if you can kind of get their head up close to your body and get their tail under control, and that's another reason why we dive in pairs a lot. If we've got a big fish, there's no shame in having a buddy grab his tail so he doesn't beat you to death. Oh, he got it? Oh my God. Oh, okay. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> a tag on him, too. He's got tag. <laughs> kind of for my own benefit of knowledge, you know, we've started tagging some of the fish, you know, with a zip tie and the dorsal fin or something, just to see. And we've had fish that we've caught three weekends in a row. Catch them, take a picture of them, let them go, and they go right back in there. <laughs> what, uh, what do you, now, what do you think that approximately poundage of this fish? My guess would be, Ants, what's this fish weigh? I'm about, let me look at it. About 11 pounds. 11 pounds, that ain't no bigger than that. Between that and, and catching a big flathead on a live bluegill that might swallow that hook, so far as that individual fish, this is not hurting him as much. It's one of those things that you do it with knowledge and respect of the resource. Yeah. This fish yeah. got just a couple little bitty, bitty spots on it, but it's, all in all, it's in great yeah. shape. Big old fat belly on it. <laughs> You really can't understand the feeling of getting in there and feeling that fish strike until you actually use your hand for a right, lure. exactly. We've taken a lot of new people and that's, that's part of the fun. Like we like to take people. Just almost universally, it's not what they expect. Yeah. It's not as scary, I guess, yeah. as people think it's gonna be. But also people are pretty surprised at how powerful those fish are. Oh yeah. There you go. Finally. <laughs> Finally got him to hit it. It's amazing to me how you, you kind of work in groups and as a family and as teams. It's a team sport. And it's more fun with a lot of people out oh, here. Yeah. What do you think about that? Pretty fish, huh? Mm -hmm. I like his belly. I know, aren't they pretty? It looks like a little male. I think you're probably right. Hey, I'm gonna keep an eye out for some of your articles and keep up with what you're doing. And uh, I'm sure you and I will find some more trouble. For sure, yeah, someday, yeah, yeah, I think it'd be a good time. Well, I enjoyed it, buddy. A lot so, of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. Now let's check in and see who else has been out having fun in this week's Ones That Didn't Get Away. Check out this nice 10-inch red ear, but it was caught by Miles Zirkelback, who's four years old. He caught this fish while fishing in Jefferson Memorial Forest. Nice job. Check out the smile on seven-year-old Gabby Mays. She's smiling because she caught this nice three-pound largemouth bass at a farm pond in Madisonville, Kentucky. Nice job. Check out this beautiful smallmouth bass that was 21 inches long that was caught in McCreary County. This fish was caught by Christopher Perry while fishing with his grandparents. Nice job. Here we have Travis Casto with a nice largemouth bass that was caught in a farm pond in Waddy, Kentucky. Nice job. Check out this beautiful eight point buck that was taken by Ronnie Greenwell. This is one of the more impressive eight pointers I've ever seen. This deer was taken in Nelson County and he said he watched the deer for a full two months before he got a shot. Nice job. 
Here we have Harper Feldkamp who knows how to spend some time in the summer. She went bluegill fishing with her dad in Henry County and brought home this nice mess of fish for some fish tacos. Nice job. And this is 15 year old Clark Garrett who went frog gigging on the opening night. Nice job. Summer is here and most of our kids are now out of school and this is the perfect time of year to take a kid pan fishing. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host, Chad Miles, and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water.